Hey guys, welcome back to 15 Minutes of Fame. My name's Ruben and we're continuing on with our week-long special called Seven Days of Fame. And basically we're just looking at a different area or a different aspect of either society or Hollywood or things like that, uh, seeing what makes people famous and things like that. Um, but today is a tribute to all of our comedians out there, whether it's the professional comedians that already made it big and have their own jokes and their own network and things like that, or you know that home comedian that is like your big brother or your little brother or you know your dad basically or whatever it is um just at home with your family your friends and stuff like that making those little comebacks or the dad jokes that we're all used to but anyways it's gonna be things like that and we're just gonna have different jokes of varying styles the first ones are gonna be like puns and dad jokes as you can tell from the intro but uh we're also gonna go into some more in-depth content heavy jokes uh, which are my personal favorite uh, we do have a little bit of a surprise with those some of the jokes towards the end are actually going to be um, jokes that didn't quite make it into some of our interview videos uh, which are from some of the interviewees that we did so uh, my team actually got some of those yeah i'm not gonna talk too much about that but we'll get into it a little later so for right now we're just gonna go into some of the quick one-liners um, but I'm going to do my best not to laugh through these, but uh, we'll see how these go. So, when does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. How do celebrities stay cool? They have many fans. You know, I've never trusted trees. They've always seemed kind of shady. Why did the ketchup blush? Because he saw the salad dressing. How come you never see elephants hiding? Because they're really good at it. Did you know the first French fries weren't actually cooked in France? No, they were actually first cooked in Greece. Something sad actually happened to me this morning. See, today my son asked me, can you pass the bookmark? And I burst into tears because I can't believe after 11 years, he still doesn't know my name is Brian. If a child refuses to sleep during nap time. Is he guilty of resisting arrest? Hmm. Justice is a dish best served cold. Because if it were served warm, it would be called just water. All right, so this next section is what I like to call on the edge jokes, which is basically like dark humor, but um, it's not gonna be anything super crazy. So. You don't have to worry about that, but nonetheless, if this does make you uncomfortable, go ahead and skip to whatever timestamp we put up on here, um, and then you can just go on to the next section. Um, but for those of y'all that still want to stick around or are into this kind of humor, then by all means, continue watching. <clears throat> what is the least spoken language in the world? Sign language. My wife once tried to unlatch our daughter's car seat with one hand and said, how do one-armed mothers do this? I said, single-handedly. A blind woman tells her boyfriend that she's seeing someone. This is either terrible news or really great news. Even people who are good for nothing have the capacity to bring a smile to your face. For example, when you push them down the stairs. All right, so this next section is my personal favorite. It's the in the scene moments, which is basically just the story jokes or uh, the ones that provide you a little extra context or background to the joke. So it kind of adds more to it, makes you visualize like you were actually in there. And it's just overall, in my opinion, makes a better joke than the one-liners, you know. The one-liners are more like the pickup lines and the story 
jokes are kind of how you reel them in, you know? All right, so first we're gonna do a couple of the shorter ones or just a couple sentences, you know, they're like quick jokes, but uh, then we're gonna go into the more drawn out jokes, which are the ones that didn't quite make it into our interviews, but they're just hilarious stories from some of our interviewees from the past um, or from the future if I haven't uploaded them yet. But, but yeah, it's basically just stories that they told us that, you know, things that happened to them in their lives or things they did or whatever it is. And it's, it's just wild sometimes, but just stick out for those and uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. But an old married couple are in church one Sunday when the woman turns to her husband and says, I've just let out a really long silent fart. What should I do? Her husband then turns to her and says, replace the batteries in your hearing aid. Not bad. This morning, as I was buttoning my shirt, a button fell off. After that, I picked up my briefcase and the handle fell off. Then I went to open the door and the doorknob fell off. I went to get in my car and the door handle came off in my hand. Now I'm afraid to pee. All right. This one's probably my personal favorite of the three. I call it the perfect husband. <clears throat> All right, so the background for this one is basically that there's a bunch of men in a locker room of this gym, right? And one of their phones goes off. So one of the guys grabs the phone, puts it on speaker and just starts talking to his wife or whatever. And um, so everyone's like listening in on this conversation, right? But anyways, so it says, the man says, hello. The woman says, hi, honey, it's me. Are you at the club? The man says, yes. The woman says, I'm at the shops now and found this beautiful leather coat. It's only $2,000. Is it okay if I buy it? He says, sure, go ahead if you like it that much. She says, I also stopped by the Lexus dealership and saw the new models. I saw one I really liked. The man says, how much? And she says, $90,000. He says, okay, but for that price, I want it with all the options. The woman says, great. Oh, and one more thing. I was just talking to Janie and found out that the house I wanted last year is back on the market. They're asking $980,000 for it. The man says, well, then go ahead and make an offer of $900,000. They'll probably take it, but if not, we can go the extra 80,000 if that's what you really want. The woman says, okay, I'll see you later. I love you so much. The man says, bye, I love you too. The man then hung up. The other men in the locker room were staring at him in astonishment, mouths wide open. He turned and asked, anyone know whose phone this is? All right, now these two are gonna be the ones that I was telling you um, are from the videos that basically we just didn't include them in the episodes because um, there wasn't enough time or things like that or our camera died or whatever it is you know technical difficulties and whatnot things happen but for one reason or another these two weren't in our episodes so we do have a chance to talk about them now and we did clear them with the people that they belong to because uh, they are a little bit embarrassing, but uh, we just won't use their names and they were completely fine with that. So this first one, I'm gonna just go ahead and read it. Um, it says, so I went on this cruise ship once with my family, right? And it was the first time we had ever gone on a cruise ship. So we are really anxious because we didn't know what to expect. And when we got on board, we found our rooms and we felt like little kids again, right? Like we were in a hotel for the first time. I mean, we were all like, oh my goodness, there's a bathroom. Oh, it's got a shower. Oh, and a giant bed and a TV. Oh my God, there's a TV. Look, a TV. Guess he was really into that TV. Well, anyway, we looked at the itineraries the crew left in our rooms and started looking for stuff to do. And there was tons of stuff. I mean, there were all kinds of shows and games. There were dance shows and musicals. There were comedians and acrobats. There were scavenger hunts and trivia games. There was just so much stuff to do. So we spent the first day just exploring the ship and trying out different restaurants. It was so much fun, right? But by the time day three came around, we had began to realize something. We hadn't gone to the pool yet. We were all so busy with all the other stuff we could do, we almost forgot to just relax by the pool. So we decided to go later in the day so it wasn't super hot and because they have music and games and other stuff at night. Uh, well, anyway, we made our way down to the pool and we're walking in, right? And a couple of steps in, I start to realize people are slowly looking over at me. At first, I didn't know what to think, right? But I was still feeling the high of being on a cruise ship for the first time, right? So I just thought maybe I just looked that good today. <laughs> So I straighten up and walk in with a little more bravado, right? Thinking to myself, wow, this must be what they mean when they say turning heads. 
So we get to the lounge chairs and we enjoy our time at the pool, right? Hanging out, dancing, and all that fun stuff. We leave the pool a little while later because we heard about a cool show about to start with some guy called El Gaucho, who was a guy who was doing some really cool tricks with ropes and stuff. It was really cool. So we went to check that out and then we went back to our rooms. I'm getting ready for bed, right? So I'm going into the bathroom, about to take a shower, and as I'm taking my clothes off, I look down at my shorts, the ones I had when we went to the pool. You know, when I was feeling like hot stuff walking through the crowds of people. Well, I realized why people were starting to stare at me as I walked past them. It was because on the back of my shorts, there was a giant skid mark going straight down the back, and these were bright white swim trunks, so there was no hiding this mark. I had been walking around like this all day. Seriously, that was probably the worst experience I've ever had on a cruise ship. That's disgusting. Moving on. <laughs> okay. All right, so this next one. Let me just go ahead and read it. I was once talking to this girl who wanted to know how adventurous I was in bed, right? Like how you eventually have that conversation with a new partner. Well, we blew through all those standard questions pretty quick. You know, the usual stuff. Favorite positions, ever done it in public putting some oil and garlic powder on your deal and telling your girl it's a breadstick from Olive Garden. <laughs> you know, the usual stuff. Well, anyways, this opened up a huge can of worms. We learned so much about each other that night. Eventually, we started talking about our first experiences and I asked her what was the first thing she experimented with. And then I found out something I can never mentally unsee. She said, well, at first, it started out pretty simple, you know, with just my fingers and stuff like that. But then I wanted to see if it would hurt if I use something bigger and more accurate. So I was like, oh, okay, so what, you use like a dildo or something? And she said, well, no, not exactly, I use the fruit. I said, oh, like a banana. She said, no, like a cucumber. I mean, a cucumber, I used a cucumber. <laughs> like, oh, damn, okay. You going all out with this then, huh? You only did like part of it, right? And she said, no, I got the whole thing in. And now I'm dying of laughter by this point. And she says, well, I'm not done. See, when I was finishing up, I heard the front door opening and I freaked out because I didn't know anybody was coming home. So I ran to the kitchen to try to put the cucumber back before anyone noticed. And I'm like, oh God, you put it back? Did you at least wash it first? She said, no, I didn't have time. Oh God. Yeah, but I'm not done. I was so embarrassed that I stayed in my room the whole day and told my parents I was doing homework. But later that night, I decided to go downstairs to watch TV and I saw my parents watching a movie with bowls of cucumber in their laps. No, yes. And I ran back upstairs so fast they couldn't see me laughing because that was probably the funniest thing that has ever happened to me. And they never found out. <laughs> That is so disgusting. Oh, okay, that, that's, that's disgusting, wow. Well, um, cool. I mean, I'm sure most of you guys experimented with fruit, but it probably never went that way. Well, there you go. I hope you guys liked it, or at least enjoyed some of these jokes, made you laugh a little bit or whatever. Uh, if it didn't, that's cool too. I mean, you know, we're just not funny enough for you. Nothing wrong with that, but uh, we'll have another episode for you guys. I know this one was a little bit shorter, but I mean, there's not much to this one, but uh, we will have another one up for you tomorrow. I believe tomorrow's actually one of the more interesting ones. Uh, it's going to be, quote unquote, a special guest episode where we have a celebrity guest coming in. Um, so I hope you guys like that one. And then we will finish up this, the week with a blooper reel. So that's going to be the last episode, which I hope you guys like. It's going to be a compilation of all of the funny moments that we've had making these shows so far with all the interviews, the games and stuff like that, things you didn't get to see, um, because that too is a part of Hollywood film and all of that stuff. You know, there's always things that go wrong and sometimes those are the best things to watch. So we're definitely gonna have that on that last episode. It's the one that I'm kind of looking forward to now and I hope you guys enjoyed it, but we will see you on the next episode.